I love Star Trek, which is why I hate Twilight. Sub Rosa. We begin the episode at a funeral, fittingly enough, and a funeral on another planet, the planet that Dr. Crusher originally grew up on. She's at the funeral of her grandmother who raised her, and this funeral is being presided over by... Ensure and certain hope that her memory will be kept alive within us all. The mayor of Whoville? Thomas's creepy uncle? Joseph Smith? Dum, 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 dum. So, at the funeral, Dr. Crusher discovers that a mysterious someone has dropped a rose on her grave. No, it's not but, a rose. It's a camellia. What's the difference? It's a red flower. Besides, the episode's called Sub Rosa. Oh, no, I can explain that. Come here. I I'll explain. <laughs> You see, to the ancient Romans, the rose was a symbol of secrecy because of certain myths involving arrows keeping Aphrodite's love affairs quiet. Therefore, they would often carve a rose into the ceilings of their banquet halls and council chambers to symbolize that everything spoken there, beneath the sign of the rose, was to be kept in that room and not go anywhere else. Sub rosa kind of means confidential or off the record. It makes a little more sense as a title for this episode, but they still could have done better. This has been another one of the many pieces of otherwise useless trivia here in Kim's Corner. It's the car! It's an easy mistake to make. No, it's Dracula! <laughs> Crusher inquires about the flower, but no one knows who left it, so it's off to Grammys! So Picard decides to keep the Enterprise around in order to help the planet fix their weather stations, which are quite old. And we find out that this planet was deliberately designed to recreate old Scotland. If it's no Scottish, it's crap! Tell me, Governor, I'm curious. You're obviously not Scots yourself. <laughs> but I am Scottish. My father was a good Scottishman. My mother was a goat! What? Shepherding's lonely work. So Troy visits Crusher at a grandma's house, and now it's time for a good long talk about Ma and Grandma. Do you ever feel, you know, not so fresh? Sure. That's why I douche, but only with natural ingredients. Oh, why did you take my gun away, Kim? Now they're talking about the heirloom candle that's been going since the 1600s. Which makes you wonder how they kept the candle going for 800 years, some of it on a starship where air is at a limited supply. I'm overthinking this, aren't I, Kim? Yeah. Well, at least the writers didn't have that problem. <sighs> oh, no. No, no. Really, Star Trek. Then, some old coop comes in and blows out the heirloom candle. What the hell are you doing? Get out of my house. I wouldn't be so high and mighty with me, Beverly Howard Crusher. I spent more time here in the past five years than you have in the past twenty. I'll kill you! I'll kill you for what you did to me! Apparently, good old Granny has some secrets of her own that she didn't tell Dr. Crusher. And Groundskeeper Willie really knows all about them. That candle has been a curse on your family for generations. Now, if you have a lick of sense, you'll listen to me right now and do away with it. Now, give it to me. That's my not anymore, buddy. Now, 
Would you please get out of my house? Now! I liked it that way it was! Elsewhere in the colony, the weather station and other things are starting to mysteriously break down. A storm? It's the middle of summer. We don't have rain at this time of year. Wait, wait. This is simulated Scotland and there's a season where you're not supposed to have rain? You don't know Scotland, do you? I'm a maniac, maniac, that's for sure. And I'm dancing like I've never danced before. Gah! That's the stuff. Don't worry, Garner. We'll keep you dry. I certainly hope so. There's a caber toss scheduled for tomorrow afternoon. Followed by a haggis eating contest, bagpipe concert, and a not spending spree. So apparently Granny had a lover. A lover in his 30s. And so Beverly gets ghost molested in bed. Don't you wish you were getting ghost molested, Kim? No! Hmm. She just isn't like these Star Trek women at all. And now it's time for another chapter of thrilling girl talk. Ugh, this is even boring me. So Dr. Crusher apparently thinks that the whole ghost molestation incident was a dream. An erotic dream brought on by reading her grandma's erotic diary. It was as if I knew him, or more like he knew me. He knew exactly how I liked to be touched. He traveled on the horseradish and he used the feather duster. Do you know how long it took me to get Jack to use the feather duster? So, uh, shall we start going over the personnel reports? For the love of all that is good and pure, shall we? Wow, that really says something when you're creeping out someone from Space Amsterdam. So, Dr. Crusher meets back up with Groundskeeper Willie and apologizes for the previous day. Groundskeeper Willie tells her not to light the candle again because there's a ghost that haunts the candle. Just do as I say. Dinner light that candle and dinner go to that house. Or before you know it, I'll be burying another Howard in this cemetery. Good night. And there's a storm of ruin. So, Dr. Crusher comes in and finds out that her house is even completely filled with roses. Camellias. Roses. Camellias. No, 